Make sure the nips are in. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Dunk Tip Tuesday. Let's get it. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Yeah. All we do is dunk. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Boy, you don't want to jump. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Yo, my bird is going up. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I do it for the love. Dunk Tip Tuesday. You know I do it for my subs. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I can never get enough. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I ain't never giving up. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Happy freaking Dunk Tip Tuesday. And we're back in it. What's good? My name is Steve. I'm five foot ten for the last 10 years now. And I'm jumping higher. And I'm going to dunk on you and everybody watching. So if you want to hit that subscribe button to make sure you get dunked on, that doesn't make any sense. But do it. Smash it. Subscribe it. Unsubscribe and do it again. What? Look. Okay, look. Hi. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the dunk life. Welcome to the next part of the adventure that you call the human experience. I want to talk today about dunking. Today's Dunk Tip Tuesday. Every Tuesday I do this. I have a podcast with Mondays and Tuesdays so far. That's kind of what I'm doing. Monday's about motivation, energy, inspiration. Get up, get after it, live quantum. Today's about dunking. That's what we're about today. Ask all your questions. I have some questions from Instagram. I have some questions from my last comments from my last video. And if you want to check out my own vlog, my own journey, check that out. Uh, on my channel. I'm having fun with the YouTube shorts. They're so much fun. They're an awesome way to just document quickly what I'm up to. So I keep you guys up to date. So ask any questions you have about me, my physical being, whatever you see right now is a reflection of you. And if you have any questions about your own journey, whether you feel like you've got pains in your knees or you got freaking mind warps, I can help with that. Let's try. <laughs> so today, <clears throat> welcome to my freaking studio. And uh, we're going to talk about the most, I already forgot. I, I had it. You know, I go with the energy. This is what I do. I know what it is, and I already remembered it, but I just wanted to tell you how I do this so you know. I go with the energy of now, so that way you feel it. Because if you don't feel it, what are we doing, okay? Listen, today is the most overlooked thing I see recently and something that's really helped me right now with my journey, and also it helps you jump your highest the fastest you can so that way you're not wasting time. So let's get into it. Quick story about me. I'm overcoming the hamstring injury, really excited to jump higher than ever. I recorded a 42.5 inch vertical. I got an email uh, two years ago at Dunk Camp. Dunk Camp's in about four or five weeks. I'm super pumped. Don't really expect myself to jump any higher, but I'm excited to see everybody. It's going to be the most fun. It's literally Disney, Disneyland for dunkers, which I think Jay Clark said, and I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be freaking making videos. I'm going to be making people laugh. I'm going to be smacking people with love. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just get that excited. And I hope you guys are there. If not tune into my, I'll be posting a lot about it, maybe taking photos. And I just hope to see you guys there one year because it's just the greatest thing. I'll be there every year until I die. Okay, that's how we're going to do it. And I'm really on the journey right now to jump my highest ever. And I'm not on that journey. I'm saying I really see the potential about to happen. I had a little up and down. Every obstacle I've had, it gets harder than the next. But I'm really pumped. Started yoga again. Notice why I'm shredded. Notice why this shirt is maybe not even a shirt. That's one thing I wanted to point out before I get into it. Leave a comment if you think this is a shirt or not. I don't know what it is, but I don't even know if I can wear it in public. So I'm putting it on a video first to get comfortable in it. And then we're going to go pump chest after this. I already did yoga. We're going to get into it. Woo! Dunk Tip Tuesday. <laughs> okay. So the most overlooked thing I see recently and in general, and something that was the biggest mistake for me, was not tracking your progress so what i mean by that is there's so many factors that go into tracking your training in general that if you're not doing it how are you making progress now think of that for anything you're doing if you're not tracking how are you making progress if you're trying to gain weight or lose weight but not looking at the scale how are you doing that now, when it comes to dunking, a lot of us already are tracking without even knowing it just naturally. We're trying to grab the rim for the first time. We're trying to hang for the first time. We're trying to yam for the first time. We're trying to dunk on somebody's freaking neck for the first time. When you do that, it's hard to forget it. So you know where you're at. But if you're not doing that or once you grab the rim or once you dunk or if you if you can't touch the rim yet, it's hard to gauge that progress. So track everything. So I'm going to go over a few things I want you to track and then some of the most important things and uh, some of the ways that I track and think about tracking. So one of the first most important ones, if you're a fan of mine, you already know this, it's sleep. So track your sleep. Simp simply try to be consistent. That's a really big routine. Anything you hear me say, by the way, if you want me to dive deeper in it, leave a question. I'd be happy to dive deeper into it and also search YouTube. I probably have talked about it already. 
sleep seven to eight hours a night consistent with that you're going to recover faster and you're also going to be able to train harder because your energy is full so that is one of the biggest ways to track your progress because when i train people when i coach people the only that i start with everything is how did you sleep last night because if you're going to train today and try to push your hardest and you didn't sleep all last night it's just not going to be there you're not going to be able to push through that stimulus that you need to get to that other side not the other side of death but you mean like the other side of progress the 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 push past your potential so sleep i'm just going to run through these quick second is nutrition tracking what you eat do i track my calories i get that question a lot i used to and why i say used to is because i did it for such a long time that i understood exactly what my body liked in order for it to repair in order for it to have high energy and perform at a high level the next day and also to be shredded and i like to be shredded because it makes me jump my best i feel like there's no efficiency it could be a completely placebo effect and i'm cool with that if there's less body fat in your body it just makes sense that you're going to be able to explode and perform at a higher level and just understanding how much you're eating if you're eating too much too little how much you're eating in a healthy way and you're feeling those high energy days that's what you want so sleep and nutrition are huge and the last one is energy it's your body awareness it's understanding how you feel on a given day and that's how i train i train day to day and the reason for that is because for example today is tuesday it's freaking as you guys know what the fuck so if i wanted to dunk on saturday and i say you know what i'm gonna have my dunk day on saturday so much could happen between tuesday and saturday that i just don't I can't plan for and things may occur that I want to do in life. For example, my friends come into town or somebody and I go to the beach and I run on the beach and it's blazing hot and I was sprinting, playing catch, whatever, swimming forever. That's not part of the training. But if we're being an elite dunker, we will skip out on that day. That's hardcore. If you want to live dunk life, you say, fuck you, I'm not going to the beach. I got a dunk on Saturday. You can be like that. But I like to live my life with a little more flexibility. And I say that because I was like that. I was saying no to everything. And I still do a lot of the times for my peace and my sanity because I'm addicted to health. But the point is, I enjoy those things too. So by not staying so strict to a dunk day on Saturday, it lets me, one, enjoy life. But two, use all those factors that happen throughout your day in a normal day-to-day life as a human play into your training and so here's one thing i want i had a thought of the other day when i talk about capturing the energy this is a thought i had is this a shirt or not and my nips are showing i don't know uh this thought was a really good way of putting what it feels like to dunk so i dunked yesterday and i was not even planning it i was planning on maybe going to the gym i was like maybe today's my full rest day i haven't had a full rest day where i don't even do active recovery in a really long time i woke up like i wanted to run through a wall and i say that because when you have a day like that Every workout, every time you're trying to get stronger, you're trying to get faster, you're trying to burn through something, you're trying to push yourself in a workout, that's what a workout is. You're trying to push yourself to a new level. You need the energy to run through a wall or when you have that energy it makes it easier and for example dunking requires maxed out of thatness what it requires that feeling to be maxed out and what i mean by that is you're trying when i'm trying to jump higher than ever when i'm trying to increase my vertical i need to jump at maximum capacity when i wake up and i feel that in my body my metabolism's moving my all my joints feel good they want they they feel like running through a wall that's the only way i could explain it compared to other days where i feel like i don't my body wants to just curl up i don't even want to walk i don't even want to do anything i don't want to some days one time i was i dunked so much the day before and my body was so fatigued and then i went to play catch with my friend playing football and even catching the ball i was like Ugh, i didn't even want to catch it i didn't even want it to hit my body my body felt fragile i don't like that feeling i don't know if you do but i don't and i also love on on the flip side of that how much i don't like that is how much i like the day i want to run through a wall so On some days, you're not going to have that run through a wall feeling, but you're still going to be able to muster up enough energy to run through that wall, which are the days where maybe you put in the work and you need to do active recovery. You need to stretch. You need to really push the range of motion and work on your core and work on ankle mobility or things that take energy and aka running through a wall, pushing yourself past your limit, but you didn't wake up with that fire. And that's okay too. But the point is, 
I like to wake up on those days if I feel like running through a wall is to go run through that freaking wall because that those are the days that are the most fun. Those are the days where I can make the most progress. I have so much energy to do the most. For example, I jumped a lot. I dunked a lot. I smashed a few dunks. You could sh I'll put them here maybe or you see them in the last vlog. And then after that, I did my RDL. I was like, I had so much energy to do it. It was easy to push myself. And I want more of those days. So if I'm tracking that, Another good example of I started yoga again. I just love the way it makes my body feel. feels like it gets blood into every nook and cranny. It's a very spiritual component as well. So much breathing. It's just fantastic. It feels like a great way for me to push myself to stretch, which I really need to recover and to just keep my body healthy. And I have this silly fear that if I do this yoga, I'm not going to be able to dunk train. I'm not going to have energy. It's going to drain me. And it's going to I'm going to sweat too much because it's hot yoga and that I'm going to use my legs too much that they're going to be tired. It's BS. And so I did that on Sunday and I dunked on Monday and I felt amazing. So now that I tracked that, I can and I knew that from the last months I did it, which was uh, earlier this year. I had that same fear for the first time in my life. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let this fear not let me do yoga because I know how good it is for me in general. And I'm talking full life, increasing my life expectancy, connecting me with the higher power and living more quantum. I was like, you know what? If I need to get more flexible, yoga is the thing to do it. Why am I not doing it? I did it. And then I dunked fantastic like the day after. So that shattered that silly belief that I had that yoga would really hold me back or interrupt my training. So now I have that data. Okay. So now why does that help you train your, your vertical to increase the fastest? Because even if you're moving slowly and you're doing one tiny detail at a time and you're tracking that and you slept good and you ate good and then you moved a little less because you're recovering and you realize you can't push through the wall today, whatever it is, you're moving in an upward trajectory at all times instead of trying something coming back to square one trying something coming back to square one trying another thing trying another thing coming back to square one over train not to, that is just going in circles going nowhere so if you're able to avoid these pitfalls and also track then as you're building this data there's a tipping point because you're building this foundation you have small progress but in turn at some point you're up here and i'm raising my hands slowly and when your foundation is super high now you can do so much in one day like i did yoga i might hit upper body after this just if you freaking yoked and just i just like doing chest and i think upper body is good for my jumping style and um I just want to get that pump as well, do some shoulders, do some upper back, also do some shoulder rehab as well because it keeps my shoulders healthy because when I dunk, sometimes I get a little bit of an impingement. It just, it's just a thing that happens because I smash the rim so much. So I do some rehab in my upper body. just feels amazing. So I can do all of that in one day. I can yell on this podcast for 12 minutes already like nothing, right? So if you want to do that, you need a lot of energy to do that. And if you're tracking all these different things, you can reverse engineer and hack your life so you can have more energy than ever. Okay, so now let's get into the questions. Thank you for listening. Why did my light turn off? 57 Joel Ajaj 57 13 years old with a 30 inch vert is that good that's fantastic i think anyone can start anywhere and you can make a lot of newbie gains so just that's a fantastic way to start i didn't even start training till i was 18 so that gives you that how do i lower the risk of getting ankle sprains i might make a whole video on ankle strength because i really made my ankles freaking amazing uh but try isometric holds where you just feel it burning in your in the top of your i'm using my hand as an example but just stand on your foot on one leg and hold it for a while until it burns it's a great way to strengthen the ankles and then also mobility so move it in all different directions and stretch it i'm thinking about changing from one foot to two feet jumped I'm thinking about changing from one foot to two foot jumping. Any tips? 1K Suave says. Um, I would say continue to do both. Work on one foot, even your off foot. If, I, if you're a left foot jumper, jump off your right foot. And with two foot, just start small. Start with uh, two steps and work it up to a full approach. But do both. One foot and two foot is fantastic. I would say stay versatile because if you're a pro dunker, you're trying to be a pro dunker, you want to be versatile that way. But if you're playing basketball, which a lot of you are, you want to be able to jump off all plants. Should I practice on a lowered rim? The official Zach Clay. 100%. I think you should definitely practice on a low rim. I think it's great for your timing. I just think you should always have a focus. So if you're trying to increase your vert, that's your focus. And on other days, maybe find a way to... Uh, Find a way to add in a little low rim practice to get the technique down, to get the muscle memory down. There's a lot of benefits for that practice, different dunks. How to stay active during an injury to not lose bounce. So one thing you can do is you might not lose bounce, but just know that that bounce, unless you're injured for five years, I mean, you're not going to lose the bounce. You are going to be rusty. It's going to take a while, but you're, you're going to have the bounce come right back. Um, 
So it's like riding a bike, dude. But what you can do is you can stretch. You can keep your diet super lean. You can be extra recovery with your sleep. All those things I talked about in today's episode. But you could also just slowly come back from it. So just be patient with the injury. Depends what it is. But don't worry about it too much. I would say just keep working out whatever you can do health-wise. Keep your metabolism moving. Try to sweat every day. Just keep your body active. And if you could stay active and not um, prolong the injury, I think you're in a really good place. Standing vertical technique. So one thing with standing vertical that I've noticed is you got to come a little lower because a lot of times when you're running full speed, you barely lower and you just pop off the ground. So try coming a little lower. Try to stick your butt out. Try to engage your glutes and your hamstrings because a lot of times I want to jump off my toes. It's just from my experience. So try to sit back in your butt and take off that way. So I'm going to answer it. Last one for my boy, Brandon. How do I squeeze some last minute inches out before my vert of my vert before dunk camp? So right now I would say probably... Whatever training you've been doing, I would say just start jumping. Just get really, really comfortable jumping and then rest like a full friggin' week before dunk camp. You're not going to lose any of that bounce. Just stay in shape. Don't worry about jumping higher. Just worry about being as fresh as you possibly can because you're going to be jumping a ton at dunk camp and you you won't be unfresh. There's no way you're going to be rusty in even a week's time. So I'd say just jump your highest, drop all the weights, uh, maybe do light weights fast. It depends what your training has been, but whatever your training has been, just taper off of it a little bit. I would just taper off it a little bit and then a week before, maybe just jump once or twice, get super fresh. Your goal is to be so fresh that the energy is blowing out of your freaking skull so that way you can have so much fun at dunk camp and jump jump a ton so that's it stay super lean have fun and that's it thank you for watching freaking i had a great day today i don't know if this is a shirt or not but we're gonna find out let's go have a great tuesday i'll see you every freaking week thanks for subscribing to my channel i love you and i have so much fun creating everything that i create that's my purpose at least that's what i'm third searching so thank you for watching dunk to tuesday it's a great day so uh, that's it Dunk Tip Tuesday. Yeah. All we do is dunk. Dunk Tip Tuesday. Boy, you don't wanna jump. Dunk Tip Tuesday. No, my bird is going up. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I do it for the love. Dunk Tip Tuesday. You know I do it for my sub. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I can never get enough. Dunk Tip Tuesday. And I ain't never giving up. Dunk Tip Tuesday.